Uh, welcome to the Ewe Den. This is going to be super fun. This is Advanced Level Lesson One. Uh, the Advanced Level musician to me is a musician that owns a skill set allows them to uh, fluently express themselves by manipulating any of the musical elements. You know, rhythm, groove, space, melody, harmony, nuance, texture, whatever your list of elements happens to be, and they truly understand the skill building process. Uh, they can take an idea or a concept, break it down to its fundamental vocabulary and integrate it into their playing. So instead of starting this video with some fancy trick, the aim of the first three videos actually will be to establish some common ground between us by offering uh, my conceptual perspective. Uh, there's three big concepts that kind of drive and influence the decisions I make while I'm playing and practicing. And I, I call them the three worlds, the dials, and harmonic formula. And I've, I've been infatuated with studying music for 49 years. And my hope is by sharing these ideas, I can save you some time or, or maybe give you a creative nudge. So my studies began in the late 70s. It was a pretty fun time. You know, Jamie Abersold just started publishing his play along records. And, and he always had these theory pages in the back of his catalogs or inside his books. And that was kind of my introduction to jazz theory. And then it led me to Coker and Baker and Hurley and Harris, Levine and Russell, Mantooth and Braganzi and Weisskopf and the list just goes on. I did so many jazz theory books that eventually I would just get them and I would open them up and page through looking for something new. They all opened doors for me. And... Uh, the, the, the books dealt with a variety of topics, and many of them would single out a single topic, like intervolic playing or pentatonics or something like that. And, and the typical delivery was to take a scale or a chord or a technique and then list a series of chords or musical contexts that they could be applied uh, or played over. Uh, and, and this became a little bit overwhelming and, and seemed a bit random. So I found application of the ideas to be dif difficult and it was a little confusing and it always seemed like it was randomly forced into my playing and there wasn't a fluidity to, to the delivery of these concepts because the, I didn't have them related anyway. So I had a tough time remembering the applications and they all just seemed scattered, right? So I needed to find a more graceful way to organize and get these concepts into my playing. And uh, it sort of happened by two unrelated experiences. And I discovered the concept of the three worlds, I guess. So the first experience was three private lessons that were several years apart. One was with Tom Stroman, another with Trent Keniston, and finally with David Liebman. So in an undergrad, Tom asked, I asked Tom about, you know, altered chords, like what do you do over C7 alt? And then he said, well, you just play one, flat two, flat three, flat four, flat five, flat six, flat seven. He called it the superlocrian scale. It's known as the altered scale. And that was it. Well, at the time, you know, my, I, I kind of went to music school unprepared. I just learned by listening to the radio and I didn't really know theory and key center. So my, at that time, my, my major scales were not very comfortable. So to, to try to manipulate them in this way, I'd get halfway through the scale and forget what key I was in. So I just put them on my to-do list to do later. So the next stop for me was in graduate school and Trent, Trent Keniston noticed that I was struggling over the altered scales and, and he suggested playing ascending melodic minor, a half step up. Well, I could do that. And it helped me tremendously, you know. Well, probably two reasons. One is I was more comfortable with my major scales and then, you know, ascending melodic minor is just a flat three, so it was pretty easy to do that. So that was awesome and I was kind of in the game on altered. And then I met David Liebman, this is like postgraduate, and, and he suggested studying the Lydian chromatic concept by George Russell. And that approach uh, uh, recommends at one point to build uh, Lydian augmented off the third of a dominant altered to get the altered sound. So I, I finally was in a situation where I could practice a lot. And I thought, wow, you know what? I'm just gonna attack all three of these techniques and then I'll have like a great perspective of altered and have lots of flexibility. Well, I quickly realized that they're all the same notes. And it was the first time I was like, oh man, there's modes of Lydian augmented or, or loads of ascending melodic minor, however 
you, you want to call it, and the light bulb sort of went on. And that was experience one. The second experience was much later. One of my students was getting ready to go off to college. I mean, he was a killing young player, you know, state chairs and playing gigs at 16 and writing his own arrangements. He was really an awesome player. And, and, and he came back from his audition, like intimidated, uh, his confidence got wrecked and he was questioning his playing. So during his audition, I, I can't even imagine what they might have been doing, but the, the professor asked him like about triad pairs. My students said, I don't even know what they are. And, and the, the professor gave him, you know, the idea that he was like totally surprised that he hadn't studied them and that that was something that was lacking. And, and man, just as a side note, I've never been a fan of the intimidating aus audition strategy it's happened uh many times in my throughout my career to my students and i just it just kind of gives me energy so what i so i just flew into encouragement mode you know saying like hey you have a solid skill set you understand major and dominant minor half diminished and altered and you can af fluently apply these concepts on site to tunes you have solid pitch and sound and and tone and intonation there's no glaring technical deficiencies your groove is solid you're 18 years old i think you have enough time to learn triad pairs and and if i could choose a deficiency for you i i think triad pairs would be one that i would choose and be able to live with and and quite honestly in 40 years of practicing i have not spent a significant amount of time on triad pairs so so I remember this well because the very next day we had a snowstorm you know it's like one of those snowstorms that like buries you and you're just done you could just cut that day out of your calendar because you're going to be on the couch and I was still a bit miffed so I went to my my home library and pulled off a book on triad pairs or hexatonics and whatever it is and I, I started reading about the definition of it to try to refresh my memory and then i sat down on the couch with a pad of paper and, and started looking at triad pairs and i found that there's seven triad pairs that you can build in major and there's seven triad pairs that you can build in ascending melodic minor and there's like 49 triad pairs to my calculation that you could build in chromatics in the chromatic scale and i was thinking musically well that should probably cover it you know that was kind of an idea given to me by jerry coker that major ascending melodic minor and chromatic will give you you know pretty much most of the the sounds that we use and and uh it's not a quote but you know conceptually that's what his words did for me through the years so so i was thinking about the about music as a universe and and if if you sort of did that then harmony would be like a solar system you know and then inside that would be planets and we can call those worlds so the major world you know sort of takes up like 65 percent of our time as a jazz musician you know it's like major two five ones and things like that and then then the ascending melodic minor world is like you know, maybe 20% of the time, and that would be all things altered, you know, then the chromatic world, you know, maybe 10% of the time, and that, that's all symmetrical things, like the diminished scale, the whole tone scale, and, and anything that's symmetrical, and that's, that's kind of linking material, maybe 10% of the time, and, and there's other worlds too, I don't want to discredit anything, but, but, you know, most of our time is spent in those three positions, so, so, so that's when I had like this, aha moment about the triad pairs you know it's just a triad pairs are a note grouping and and if you group six notes of a scale it it, it gives you a certain texture when you apply it and and then i was thinking well that could be applied to any one of the worlds and it could be any note grouping so if you grouped in if you did intervals you know that's a grouping in two that's a very spacious uh grouping that would be grouping in two, and then a triad would be grouping in three, and seventh chords, that's grouping in fours, and then pentatonics is grouping in fives, and hexatonics is six, and then our regular scales and modes are sevens, and then bebop scales are eights, or maybe tens, and now we've arrived at the chromatic scale, so we've changed worlds at some point. So all of these are just manipulation of texture, and and wow, once I understood that, I was like, oh my goodness, you could just apply these different textures to major, ascending melodic minor, and chromatic in a musical context, and all these note groupings could be applied kind of in the same, man in the same manner, and that would give us like, 
man, a certain, a certainly a to-do list pedagogically to like be able to understand and apply those uh, note groupings. And vocabulary-wise, as a performer, it would give you like this palette of choices. I was like super excited. And uh, it seemed super obvious, but it was a brand new thought or perspective to me. And uh, this, this thought connects directly to the next video, which is going to be the dials, which is a way I, I uh, or a concept or a thought that I use to manipulate uh, melodic material and motifs. And that'll be the next video. So, well, let's look at an example of, of this note grouping thing to make it just a little bit less abstract. So if we were going to take a pentatonic sound, a grouping of five, and we were going to use it in an altered situation. So let's say we had a half diminished chord like D minor seven flat five or D seven half diminished. And we were going to play, we're going to use a mode of ascending melodic minor over top of it. So it could be Locrian sharp two, D Locrian sharp two, or else we could build, you know, F ascending melodic minor off the flat three. Well, if we have a set of altered pentatonics that are derived directly from ascending melodic minor, let's say like uh, F minor six, G minor seven, uh, A flat whole tone pentatonic, C, C major flat six pentatonic, and then a D minor seven flat five pentatonic, and that was like our group. Well, they can be applied anywhere F half diminished occurs or any other altered situation, right? Uh, this opened doors for me hearing wise and it made application easier. It made practicing more simple and more organized. And so it's a little bit like reverse engineering instead of saying like, here's a note grouping and here's a list of chords that they work over. It's more like, hey, here's a scale I want to do and how can I apply this note grouping to the scale because I already know where this scale applies. And for me, that was, way better and much easier. So this is what the advanced lessons are gonna be like, and I'm sure uh, there'll be some playing involved in the future and some demonstrations. And I see this as being more conceptual because you guys have uh, a lot already together and you're probably just looking for a different slant of looking at things. It makes things more fun. And uh, well, please, you know, reach out to me with your ideas and feedback. That'll help me so much. If this was helpful to you, hit like, and uh, I'll get a new video together real soon, and we'll talk about the dials. Have a great day.